Hey, so I just wanted to give an update on my um, hybrid 110A, 110B um, Polaroid conversion to pack film. I basically followed the directions on the net, um, but I did a few things differently on my own. Some of them good, some of them mm, questionable. Um, this is what the finished camera looks like. You can kind of see here the handle range finder and the leather. Um, so I did something a little different than uh, most people that are doing the conversion. I actually uh, cut this side of the um, of the camera off. So originally with a rollback you would have um, kind of a beveled side here and a beveled side here and the roll would the roll film would fit you know in either end. Um, and that's why the range finder kind of uh, goes out this far because originally there would be sort of um, a can for the roll. So I cut that off because it was made out of metal. I thought it was kind of heavy um, and unnecessary, but it kind of created a problem of, um, first of all, looking a bit ugly and then also like lacking kind of ergonomics for a proper handle. So what I eventually did was I took apart um, a handle that works with, let me see if I have it over here, um, basically an off uh, off-camera flash uh, holder. You can get these for like really cheap for like, I don't know, 10 bucks or so on, on eBay. And I, I already happened to have one. So all I did was I cut the, I took the handle part off um, and I uh, I had saved the leather from the original um, camera and I, I put it through that plastic handle and it actually happens to be perfectly sized to do it. So weirdly enough, it kind of works. Um, and then I, attached that handle onto um, what was left of the frame um, using uh, some uh, uh, epoxy. So it's it's pretty sturdy. I mean, I can definitely like hold the camera and I'm not worried about it going anywhere. It's not going to fall or anything. It's pretty, pretty sturdy. Um, and I think it's lighter than than the original hammer uh, handle and camera. Um, but again, I don't know if it was really worth all the additional work of chopping it off and, you know, figuring out how to put a handle on there and all that stuff. But I don't know. But in terms of actually holding the camera, I kind of like it. I find it I find it's a more secure kind of grip. So personally, I'm OK with making that choice. Um, strangely enough, one of the biggest pains in the butt with this whole uh, thing was working with the leather. Uh, I've never really worked with leather as a material before, and I really had no idea uh, what I was getting into. Leather itself is kind of hard to cut to size, um, and also using spray adhesive can be like kind of a mess if you don't know what you're doing and get it sticky all over the place. And um, So if I was to do this again, one of the things that I would probably do differently is um, if you when you're going to be applying the leather on, like I was, I was just um, putting spray adhesive on the back of the leather and then squishing it right onto the thing. What I would have done differently is if you actually put some painter's tape around the corners of where you're going to put down the leather and the adhesive, because when you put it down, you know, you're going to squish it and some of the adhesive is going to come out of the edge here and it gets real sticky and gunky and stuff. And so if you just like Put some painters tape there, let it actually set, and then pull it off on the, with the tape. I think um, I think that would solve the problem. Um, I also managed to accidentally break the latch while I was doing something or other. I don't I don't remember. I was bending it and just broke off. So right now I actually just have like a bit of leather that that I use to um, uh, clasp it shut. Uh, finally, in terms of connecting to a flash, um, what I decided, uh, which is especially important given that it, it, most of the time. Uh, you're going to be using 100 ISO, I mean, always if you're doing color. And, uh, I mean, there is uh, 3,000 uh, uh, for black and white, but you're not always going to be using that. Anyway, so with that, I wanted to be able to use flash. And what I decided was there is there is a hole to um, uh, hook up the shoe that like is embedded into the camera. But what I decided was I, it's already so heavy and I wouldn't really be using an on-camera on flash anyway. So what I did instead was um, I keep I keep a camera flash on this little tiny tripod stand here. I got this tripod stand on um, KEH.com for like 10 bucks or so. It's really cheap. It's really sturdy, really good quality. Um, and then this is a, a 
trigger receiver here. This is a real cheapo one um, on Winsen. It doesn't always fire. It was a pain in the butt. So, I mean, you know, spend more money, you'll get something better. Uh, and then the flash that I happen to be using is just a Vivitar 5200. I also have a, a couple of um, uh, uh, 285s. But anyway, uh, so what I did instead was the shutter, the shutter on the, the, um, the, uh, uh, Polaroid uh, lens. It's actually, I guess, uh, what's the lens again? Oh, is Varix, I think. Anyway, um, it has uh, a uh, a PC port. It has um, a female P PC port here on the. Uh, there you go. You can kind of see it there. Um, and so what I did was I got um, I got this off. Flash Zebra, which I, I really like them actually as a website. Uh, really, really fast shipping, reasonable prices, you know, um, decent quality stuff. I've never actually had anything from them break, so I feel I feel like I can give them a recommendation. Anyway, so this is um, uh, a male uh, PC uh, cable, and it actually is connected to a Flash U um, permanently. Um, I also have a setup that is like another uh, flash shoe that can uh, do PC sync, but I, I I considered for this camera it's just better to have like a dedicated thing. Um, only issue with this you have to be careful of is there's really not much space between um, the the female port here and uh, the actual lens board, so it's actually even a tight fit for this guy to get on there. Um, and depending on which uh, uh, sort of cable you're using, you might not be able to actually squeeze it on there effectively. I had that problem with a different cable I was using. Um, and then this is just a wireless transmitter. So basically what's going on is when I fire the shutter, it's just telling this um, this hot shoe uh, to tell the transmitter to tell the flash via the receiver to go off. Um, this frees it up so I can just be holding the camera like this and you know doing my little picture taken. And you know off to the side to me, I can put down the flash wherever I want. Um, Let's see, any other notes to make about this camera? Um, not really. I mean, I had a pretty good experience going through the conversion. It was definitely harder than I thought it would be, and um, I definitely underestimated how difficult it would be to get through the metal <laughs> with the Dremel tool I had. I, I don't know. If you, have a, if you have access to a drill press, that's a really ideal. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would say update it all together. I mean, not really counting the flash stuff, you know, it cost me about, I would say 200, 250 bucks to build the whole thing. Um, I managed to get leather from a friend of mine, um, the handle I just happened to have around already. So, you know, and I had some paint too. So some, there was some like incidental other expenses. Um, anyway, I really love shooting with this. It looks really beautiful. It, it gives great prints and um, if you're curious about trying flat pack I really recommend it I recommend um, getting actually if you don't want to go straight into a uh, like a, the deep end with a conversion like this I would get um, a Polaroid land camera 100 um, there's a lot of accessories for the 100 all the accessories are cheap it takes flat pack um, it has a tripod socket which not all other uh, Polaroid land cameras from that time did um, so it's a really good like entry point into using flat pack. And um, the other recommendation I can make is it's uh, it's always great to take the opportunity to take shots of people, give them the positive print, and keep the negative for yourself if you're shooting in 100 speed. Um, and then make a scan from the negative uh, after you, after you've bleached it. So you can always get you know uh, a copy of the photo for yourself and one to give away, which can be really nice when you're just looking to be able to take random pictures of people. It's a nice trade-off. Anyway, if you have any other questions about how I put together this sort of Frankensteinian um, camera contraption here, uh, or about any of the other specific parts I bought, uh, feel free to give me a comment or, uh, you know, whatever, through the powers of the internet. Give me, send me your vibes if you need to know this. All right. Uh,